everyone. Thank you for tuning to our video today. My name is Lindsay DeCarlo. I'm the Outreach and Recruitment Coordinator here at this University of Wisconsin Madison School of Pharmacy. Today, I'll be talking with Kevin Luck, Assistant Professor in the Social and Administrative Sciences Division here at the School of Pharmacy. Kevin, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, what are you drinking today? I am drinking some Peruvian coffee from my local Costco, uh, and I'm drinking out of BB-8, who is keeping it nice and warm for me today. Awesome. And I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, sorry. So, um, okay, to kick us off, can you tell us a little bit about your teaching and research responsibilities here um, as a faculty member at the school? Sure, so my teaching actually aligns very nicely with the research that I do. Uh, my primary teaching in the Doctor of Pharmacy program is teaching the first years about what I call the structure and dysfunction of the US healthcare system. We talk about a lot of things that are going on in the news right now. We talk about things like health insurance, uh, drug pricing. We talk about ways um, that pharmacists can contribute to improving the cost of healthcare, access to healthcare services, as well as the quality of care that patients receive. Uh, I'm also involved, I helped uh, develop a rural health program for uh, students who are interested in pursuing uh, rural pharmacy practice in their careers. Uh, it's a really, really exciting program. It's a small uh, program. We bring in a lot of alumni from the school to really get a, a hands-on experience of learning what it is to practice in a rural area. It's a really great networking opportunity for the students. And that aligns with some of the research that I've been doing, trying to improve uh, healthcare in rural areas and for other underserved populations. And a lot of students that I interact with are, are interested in non-traditional career opportunities. So I used to be a community Ooh. pharmacist. I practiced in a community pharmacy setting for about a decade. Um, and now a lot, of, uh, a lot of students who work with me end up going into work in pharmaceutical benefit managers, pharmaceutical industry, uh, the FDA, CDC, uh, people who are interested in, in finding ways to contribute to improving health sort of outside of a pharmacy setting. So it's kind of a, a, a different career path than a lot of other students take. Okay, um, really quick on this. A lot of people um, probably don't know what a pharmacy benefit manager is. You said that, um, could you explain what that is really quick? Sure, so they're kind of like the prescription drug version of a health insurer. Uh, a lot of times they uh, provide prescription drug insurance. So they determine what drugs are covered. They determine the, the clinical benefit of new drugs that come onto the market. All right, that's really interesting. Um, so you also mentioned something about health policy, um, which is an area constantly in the news these days, as you mentioned. So can you tell us a bit more about your work there? Sure, so I'm involved in a number of different areas related to health policy. Again, this is a, a very complex process where you know, we may have lawmakers working at the state capitol. We're, we're very uniquely positioned at, at, at UW-Madison being located in the state capitol uh, where we have ready access to um, support the legislative process. So I've done presentations uh, at the state capitol for legislators uh -huh. and their staffers, educating them on issues that they're um, currently under debate, not trying to influence, but really just provide background information. So, you know, when they're considering a bill related to prescription drug pricing, it's going in and talking about what are the factors that determine drug prices? What is the, the prescription drug marketplace look like? Who are the different players that are involved? Uh, so I've done uh, presentations on, on drug pricing. I've also done presentations at the Capitol um, on uh, opioid abuse and the role that pharmacists can play in helping address the opioid epidemic, uh, kind of sometimes falling on the back burner now in the midst of a pandemic, but uh, opioid abuse is still an incredibly important issue right now in our country that, that uh, really needs to be addressed and pharmacists are really uh, well equipped to help uh, address that issue. And then of course at the school, we have uh, classes that touch on this. Uh, in the class that I teach, we talk a little bit about what, are the, what is the pharmacist's role in health policy and how does health policy impact what pharmacists do? Uh, you know, we live in a very interesting time right now in the, in the COVID-19 pandemic and pharmacist roles have changed almost overnight in some respects. We're seeing things right now, uh, community pharmacists, uh, community pharmacy interns, pharmacy technicians, 
having changing roles to allow them to provide uh, vaccinations and immunizations for COVID-19 and, and other conditions as a way to get pharmacists involved in public health initiatives and expand the reach of these things. So uh, health policy is something, uh, some people love it, some people hate it, but it's a really exciting field to be in right now. And, and pharmacists really are uh, undergoing some really exciting changes in, in sort of their career opportunities right now. Um, so it sounds like this is a really uncommon area for a focus for a pharmacist. I'll admit, before coming to School of Pharmacy about three years ago, you see the doctors in the news. The doctors, you know, reference to, or this doctor's online to talk about the pandemic or talk about this or this or this drug. And it's never really the pharmacist in the media that is brought on, not that I've seen thus far. So it seems like it's more of an uncommon area. So that was a bit of a surprise, I'll, I'll admit. Um, I, I will say we are a bit late to the game. Uh, okay. When I was a pharmacy student, 10 plus years ago, you know, this wasn't anything I was familiar with either. And it's just something that's evolved over time. And, and we're starting to see a growing number of pharmacists involved in this area, but also pharmacy students are getting heavily involved in this area. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely traditionally been other health professions, nursing and medicine particularly. Uh, but I think especially right now, like I mentioned, pharmacy is really undergoing some exciting changes right now. There's talks of um, expanding the ability for pharmacists to prescribe medications. Some states do allow that. They've talked about allowing that here in the state of Wisconsin as well. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, changes both for pharmacists and technicians here in the state of Wisconsin uh, in terms of the roles and responsibilities that they're allowed to do. Uh, we're, we're seeing some really exciting changes that, that's being driven by uh, you know, like-minded people who are interested in finding ways to improve the profession and, and to find ways to utilize pharmacists to you know, improve the healthcare system. So it's 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 new, but it's it's really exciting. I think that is very exciting. I think that's exciting for the future of pharmacy, the growth of it. I think people think about, or prospective students are thinking about, um, is this is this the right field to go into? To know that it's growing and changing with the current state, um, I think that's super exciting and and hopeful for what this profession can turn into. So that's really exciting to hear. Um, yeah, it's not it's not the typical career pathway, right? Like a lot of people think of community pharmacies or doing residencies, going to practice in hospitals and health systems. But uh, we're seeing a lot of diversity in the students who are coming into pharmacy school and their interests. And really, uh, I think students are becoming more aware of the variety of options that are available to them in pharmacy beyond just the, the traditional pharmacy practice. And, and so we're, we're seeing students come in who have ideas like, you know, I want to go work for the government. I want to go work in policy. I want to go work in informatics or, or other, you know, areas, uh, business administration. So uh, we're seeing a lot of what I call non-traditional career opportunities for pharmacists. And I think the school is doing a better job of not only making students aware of those opportunities, but also uh, connecting them with the resources they need to be successful and preparing them for those future careers that they're interested in. So it, it's, it's really been a shift and, and, and it's a really exciting thing that frankly, I wish I had when I was a student. <laughs> in terms of what students can do here at UW-Madison, we have a lot of opportunities for students to get involved uh, regardless of what their career path is. We have a number of student organizations. Uh, I myself am the advisor for the uh, AMCP chapter, which has to do with managed care pharmacy. Uh, we have a, we just completed an annual pharmacy and therapeutics competition uh, where students uh, work in small groups to evaluate information on a new drug that's come out recently and they put together a, a dossier about all of the evidence for that drug. They prepare a presentation and uh, they compete at a national competition with students from other universities around the country and we've actually been oh, wow. Uh, we've actually been finalists in the in the last couple of years and fingers crossed, hopefully we will be again this year. Uh, but yeah. it's a really exciting thing where students who have an interest in drug information, uh, pharmacy benefit managers, the industry can get some experience and get some connections. Uh, awesome. Here in Madison, we're well connected with uh, Navitas Health Solutions, which is a local pharmacy benefit manager, really a unique practice model that they have there. They also have a specialty pharmacy for students who are interested in that. And so, you know, we have a mentoring program that we've set up with them to try and get students 
not only some understanding of what goes on in these fields and, and some practical experience, but also getting those personal and professional connections that might help them down when they're looking for uh, jobs and careers down the road. Sounds like there's a ton of opportunities here for our students to pursue those. Um, how exciting. Thanks for sharing all of that. Thanks for sharing a lot about your work. Um, it's important work. You're making a difference in our community and for all of us. So as a non-pharmacist, thank you for fighting for us. <laughs> Thanks for the kind words and for, for having me join you today. Yes, thank you so much for joining us and thanks for taking your coffee break today. Um, everybody take care. Bye everybody. Bye.